Okay. Today's Monday. We're in Dillard, Georgia, up Betty's Creek. I was just here four days ago on Thursday, and we lifted up the spring, some of the spring honey, these deep boxes, put them over an escape, and gave the bees an empty medium, thinking that the sourwood was about to begin. Well, we've come back four, later, four days later, and they've made honey, but it's not sourwood. The basswood is done. We can see that clearly. So they're just making odds and ends out of these fields. It's uh, a little bit of Dutch white clover, a little bit of that red clover, and a little bit of this plantain type of stuff. They actually work this little thing. It doesn't even look like a flower, and it's almost done, but they work that also. We just tasted this honey. It doesn't taste like sourwood at all. It's the color of sourwood. That's what can fool you. And the nectar splashes all over when we do that to a frame. So they're definitely bringing it in. And of course, they're very gentle. You can see I'm working without a veil. They're very preoccupied. Let's taste this one, John, see if it's the same. I'm sure it is. It's really good honey. It's just not sourwood. And people wonder why we go to such work to try to keep it separate. People say sourwood's not that big a deal. And I get that. It's not everybody's favorite. But financially, it's a big deal because it's worth so much more. There's a supply and demand problem with sourwood. There's not enough of it to meet the demand, which has driven the price up. Right. Truck looks different today. We're starting the new phase for the season. Today is the first day that we're going to start lifting our sourwood crop up above escapes. We're starting in our southernmost yards, um, which are completely done. And now it's it's really sort of a race. Well, the southern yards have just finished. The northern yards have another seven, perhaps ten days, and then they're finished. And the idea is to get all of this honey off as fast as possible so other honey doesn't mix with it. Things like sumac and perhaps some red clover and just other odds and ends that can come. I talked about, you know, sourwood being valuable if it's fairly close to pure. And, uh, and that's the truth. That's why we work so hard to make sourwood is because of its value. It's worth twice as much as regular honey, maybe even more. Right. So we're meeting Selena in a few minutes and John and I are going to start lifting honey up and then uh, this is Thursday. Next Monday we'll start uh, harvesting, literally taking more people with us, another truck. And we're going to pull off a heck of a lot of supers in just seven to ten days and hopefully the weather will cooperate and it'll all work. So just thought I'd mention, I'll, and of course in our videos over the next week or two we'll be showing how certain yards did. Some did pretty good, some didn't do good at all. And uh, I know some folks just like seeing that stuff, you know, how we're doing, how our bees are doing. And so over the next week or two you'll see a lot about sourwood harvest and getting ready to treat. We will be treating with Apigard just as fast as we can and we'll be talking about all of that. Anyway, so I just told John and Selena yesterday the last week or two has been kind of coast, right. kind of a coast routine, you know, checking supers and adding supers. And now, now the real hard work starts when we start pulling this honey and lifting all this weight. So yep. I know John's up for it. I know Selena's up for it. The question is, the other people that we pull in to help us, if they're up for it, we're conditioned for the heat and the sweat and the bee suits and the, all the humidity and all that. But... Uh, we have to be careful with the people we have help us because we have had people melt down on us before. Oh, yeah. And uh, so anyway, just, a, just some thoughts on what we're about to start. You can see the truck has uh, 
rims on it. We're going to put a rim on, then the B escape, then the supers, come back four or five days later, get the supers off. We're also going to be taking off all of our dark colored lids. We're putting on only HDO lids because the dark uh, paraffin dipped plywood lids are quite dark and on a single story colony they can create a lot of heat for the apigard treatment and I don't want to do that. And just if anybody's interested, I'm going to be selling all of our uh, paraffin dip plywood lids uh, cheap, probably five bucks each used. And um, if there's nothing wrong with them. I just don't like that dark color on the top for apigard treatments and stuff. And we're always dealing with that, so I'm just going to sell them and switch all, all across the board to HDO. Anything else I can mention, John? Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay, we'll take some videos in the yards too. Thank you, Katie. This is our most southernmost yard. It's also the lowest elevation yard um, between Hollywood and Clarksville, Georgia. This is the first yard we're going to be lifting sourwood supers on. As you can see, there's not a lot of supers on some of these. We were here a week and a half ago. They were not doing that much. I don't expect much out of them, but I know I always uh, can be surprised. Maybe we'll be surprised and see that these supers are full. The bees are decent. They've all uh, been taken care of. They're in good condition. You can see a couple empty spots on some of the pallets, just colonies that went queenless or whatever. So I'm anxious to see what we got here. Okay, let me pop some lids. Let's see what we got here. Are we going to be disappointed or pleasantly surprised? Disappointed. There's honey in there. Take one of the frames out. I want to look at the color too, see if they've been contaminating it with anything. Do one of these. Well, that's on cap. Okay. Nice All right. Well, it looks good. Yeah. I presume the super underneath is fairly full. I think this is the only empty or empty ish frame. So. This is why we're here now. We might make a few more drops of sourwood, but I want this off before they start contaminating it with something else. It's very important to us. And we don't keep 100% of everything else out, but we try our best. And the more pure it is, the better it will be received by customers. Oh, that definitely didn't make very much. Is the box underneath very full? Mm, three quarters. Yeah, not many. So that thing made about 20 or 25 pounds. Maybe this one made 45. Can you look at all of them? Yeah, let's just look at this pallet and then we'll move on. Just trying to do a video on our first yard. Obvious yeah, disappointment. Yeah. Actually, I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed, but not surprised. I really didn't expect much out of this yard because um, of the location and how dry it was. Now that one did okay. Yeah. That's three quarters full. Let's see what the one underneath looks like. Okay. That's got some weight in it, Bob. Okay, so that one did fair. It's got one and three quarter supers. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's look at the bottom super on this one over here. I want to see if okay. they put something underneath. Well, there's 30 pounds in there. Yeah, so it's not a not many bees. Kind of interesting. So that's another subject I need to talk about how these bees are going to shrink so fast because the brood nests is, brood nests became constricted in most of our colonies. It was really weird how it unfolded. That'll be another talk. Okay, they did okay. All right. I can see the color. That's wonderful looking honey. So hopefully this is as bad as it gets. Not great bees. What's that? It's dripping. Oh, it's dripping. I'm sorry. Hey, you got new boots. I did. Oh, yeah. Look at there. Okay. <laughs> okay. We got to show the bad with the good. I know we've seen a lot of bee yards in the last two weeks that have done fairly well. And I knew that all these southern yards would be the ones where we would probably be disappointed because of how dry it was and how the 
bees shut down for a few weeks and kind of started shrinking and all of that business. So hopefully, and there, let's see, we're, at a, we're a little over 1,500 feet in elevation and we've got two, we got three yards in this situation down here. I think they're going to be our worst sourwood yards. We'll see. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, but I expect the other two down here in this area to be kind of like this. This one is about five miles south of the shop. We call this the river yard. The, there's a river right over there. And they did fare. I mean, I really can't complain. I thought they were going to do worse. Um, they did fare. Let's pop a lid or two. I want to talk about the white. Just pop one of them lids. Okay. That just happens to be the one, one of the ones that isn't doing so good. Let's pop the other lid beside it. Well, I know where the prettiest one is. Well, let's pop that one. That's probably okay. Yeah, see, we're still seeing a lot of white wax. When you stop seeing the white wax and it starts to get travel stained, then you know the flow's over. These guys are still building just a little bit of comb here. You can see it's bleach white. And that's a sign that they're still creating beeswax. And at the moment they quit bringing nectar in, they will stop making fresh beeswax. And within a day or two, you start to see travel stain on there. You don't have that bleach white look on the fresh built wax anymore. So right now today, these bees are still making a little bit of honey, but they're starting to make something besides sourwood. So we are going to pull it. We've done seven yards so far today. We're going to do two more before we're done. And uh, we got a long ways to go before this is over. It'll take us seven to ten days to get to the other end, which should work out just right. All in all, I feel okay because uh, I didn't expect a very good flow down here south of the shop. It was so dry and it just didn't feel like the bees were going to do it. But they've come along and made a few pounds. Um, probably two-thirds of these supers are fullish, and the third are like half full or something like that. So all in all, it wasn't a bad flow here and John found is that blackberries John the autumn olive. oh autumn olive John likes autumn olive yeah, yeah. so good <laughs> okay so you're telling me this tastes good what what do you go by do you go by the color to tell if it's ripe or yeah what? If it's red it's got that red so that's ripe autumn olive yeah. autumn olive and it's mostly seed. I've just been swallowing the seed. <laughs> okay. John, John says it's good. They're good. Take his word for it. Well, this thing's covered. Mm -hmm. Boy, the birds are going to have a heyday with this thing. There's so many. Yeah. That's a field of goldenrod and such things right over there. Hopefully they won't mow it. I need to go bribe them with a jar of honey and say, don't mow until the goldenrod's over. <laughs> don't laugh, John. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've lifted the honey on seven yards, and I want to know how many times you got stung not wearing the jacket and all. About five. Five Three stings. Three of them were at Gibson. <laughs> Three in one yard, huh? Yes. Five stings lifting all of, all the honey we've lifted today. I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty nice today. Yeah, they were nice today. The honey flow is not completely over. That's a lovely sight, and we do have some supers in here that look like that. That's a plugged out super. Of course, the other super that was on top probably doesn't look quite like that. I don't think they did that much. Well, it does too. This colony did really well. That's probably the best colony in the yard. They've got two plugged out mediums. Most of them had a, a box and a half or something like that. Um, in, let's see, I guess this would be officially called Tallulah Falls, Georgia. South of our shop, about five miles. Elevation. 1650. That's another uh, interesting note. Elevation is really playing a part this year. Um, our 1500, 1550 feet elevation yards, the sourwood is a different quality. It's contaminated with more other things. Uh, it seems as we go up in elevation and farther north, the sourwood seems to be better. And that's typical. That's average. Usually, usually underneath uh, 1500 feet we start to see the quality the purity the color all of that stuff kind of deteriorate when it comes to making sourwood I'm not saying you can't make sourwood at uh, 13 or 1400 feet I proved that you can but it's just you got to get above 15 and even better above 16 to make the better stuff and the most of it so on to the next yard we're on Wolf Creek Road just out of Lake Mott about three maybe four miles south of the shop 
and the elevation here is 1900 feet. We just checked these colonies and they are still on the sourwood with no sign of any other nectar source showing up in the supers. So it's a Thursday. We're going to hold off till Monday on this yard, give them another four, maybe five days before we put the escapes on. Um, there is a little splashing nectar in here yet, so they're, they're doing okay. We'll wait on this one. A lot of our yards are between 1,900 and 2,200 feet, so next week we'll start hitting some of the ones that are closer to the shop that are in that elevation range.